the crime lab found seminal fluid mixed with vaginal secretions in the victim's Tyvek suit. And they also found vaginal secretions on the spear. Okay, that qualifies as the grossest trace evidence ever. You can talk about really intense things, and then you can have some really funny little moments. And to me, it feels like the most natural thing in the world. I know to some people it feels really odd, but within the course of a conversation with somebody, you can go all over the place. Call your mom. Tell her we're friends again. We are all different colors, all of us, and we can say and do contradictory things all day long. And we will do that in front of people that we trust. We'll be angry, we'll cry, we'll be silly. What the hell is fondant? It's sticky, sweet, inedible crap that they put on cakes. Don't put it on my retirement cake. We kayaked! You surfed for the first time. We went to that all-you-could-eat luau with the pig. Remember? Yes. Liar! Don't play me! When we're constructing these stories, we only have one crazy person a season. I only allow one person a season to be completely whacked. The rest of the time, I want to feel the desperation that leads to a murder. What, what, did, what did he do to your mom? He hurt her. I just wanted her to tell what he did to her. It's over, darling. It's over. I'll tell. It is really hard, and audiences are very sophisticated, and it's not like we're not competing with a lot of other crime shows. And so coming up with new little twists and new little pieces of forensics, it just requires a lot of time, a lot of research, a lot of thought. So the crimes come from everywhere. She is very, very thoughtful in that process of what we have to go through to find it and to make it work and to make it organic and to make it lifelike and real. And I could not be more thankful for her in that process. We usually have a read through and we'll go, what? what, do you, what where did you know, where did you come up with this? Sometimes it's really just even looking at your character and you know, Maura has so many outrageous things to say sometimes. It's like, what inspired that? this idea of a killer who was putting bodies inside a statue. We got to a place where we decided we'd use the Venus de Milo and it worked on a lot of different levels. We could use a cast and replicate it and there was something kind of nice about it thematically because of course the Venus de Milo is beauty and love and all the things Dennis didn't really have in his mommy and by the end of the episode hopefully it all makes sense that this was his life's mission was to try and reconnect with his mother he never had <laughs> by taking his actual mother, killing her, putting her inside a statue and then killing other women. It's beautiful. Who's the artist? Um, me. The hand was planned. The writers all knew where we were going. The actors did not. So it came up in scene. She talked about it. It was always there. And then when we got to episode 10 and we find out what's inside that hand, it takes on a whole new cast, doesn't it? It looks a whole lot different when you know mom's hand is inside. I never ask Janet where she comes up with it. I just say, come up with more. I'm knocked out that she can do what she does because I don't have that discipline or set of skills. I'm really good with words, but uh, the blank page and having to deliver something under a deadline is my idea of no fun at all. Mm -mm. Love the smell of deco in the morning. Look, maggots like it too. Janet is just the perfect writer for this job because of her background in journalism. And she's just so curious about all these different aspects of life and the things that make people tick. And it fills out the show when it makes it, I think, interesting to watch rather than just the normal, dry case of the week. I like to think like a criminal. I mean, if I were going to go murder somebody, I would not want to spend the rest of my life behind bars. I don't. I only murder on paper. But I think like a criminal. How would I get away with it? What would I do? I know in, in life, from having covered many, many, many crimes, that criminals inevitably make some dumb mistake, but we try and set it up so they make as few mistakes as they possibly can. So make the mystery as, as dense as we can, so that when Maura or Jane comes up with a revelation or a clue or a thought or, or some break in the case, it feels smart. When's the last time we had someone commit suicide by rat poison? Never. Oh, I think we have ourselves a homicide. How about you break down these seized guns? Parts go in the evidence barrel here. 
I was trying to come up with something that could happen inside the Boston Police Department, and I didn't want to do drugs. I was thinking, what about guns? Because every police department seizes guns. And so I was working with our homicide detective who's on staff, and we started riffing on how could you get away with stealing the guns you've seized? Because, of course, they all have serial numbers, they're all very carefully logged, and then they're melted down. So we just sat and talked and, and thought through it and, and worked on it and worked on it and it's, it's a lot like a puzzle. And then you just keep working on it and eventually you get it. But I thought it would be interesting, instead of doing drugs or cash, what about guns? You got any last words? You feeling lucky right now? No firing pin. That's not luck, that's just covering my base. I know when writers are sitting in a room wondering how can, you know, it's difficult to write a two-hour movie, never mind a how-many-hour show, right? So you have to come up with so many different ideas. I just did, uh, I have a lot of respect for their thought process. Episode four came to me as a scene. It came to me in the form of our homicide detective who's on staff, who had a scene in his head. And what he said was, here's all I have. A bus driver pulls up to a bus stop, opens the door, and there's a woman dressed like a doll who's dead. And I went, I'm in. That's an episode, right? You see it, it's chilling. He didn't know what the story was, but we had this image of a woman dressed like a doll waiting at a bus stop. We built the story around that scene. Each episode starts in a different way and takes its own path through. And I wish there was a more sort of ordered, logical way of doing it, but that is the mess of, called creativity. His penis has a pulse. How many chances does a writer have to write, his penis has a pulse? I had to write that line. I mean, I had to. The guy was dead, Moore reaches down, his penis has a pulse. His penis has a pulse. That is maybe my favorite line of season three. And having to play it straight and I have to grab it and say it to Jane's eyes, it was very funny. So we took two tubes and a piston and an air supply and we had a special effects guy and he built a tent out of a plastic body bag. And on cue, he would press the button and the tent would rise. I'm surprised we got through that day because people couldn't stop laughing. The crew was howling. Angie and Sasha were like two little girls. Oh, that was exciting. You think we should bump fists? <laughs> Her fourth digit isn't as badly burned as the others. It's definitely unpredictable, and a lot of times with Janet, that's how it is. You don't ever start an episode in a squad room and end in a squad room, so it's not like any other procedural show in that way. Whatever Janet Tamaro throws at us, I never question her. I'm happy to just jump on the roller coaster and see where it takes us. Janet has done an incredible job of throwing the characters into really interesting and unique and unusual situations, but we never lose sight of the authenticity of who they are and, and the world that they're living in. I'll be excited to see what stories we're doing in season four, but so much of it really starts with Janet and in the writer's room. And that's like the seed, and then they give us the fuel to, to push us higher. I get inspired by so many different things. Sometimes it's just a conversation I had with someone, sometimes it's a story I once covered, but I think that there's so much information out there and it's so accessible. And so episode by episode, what I try and do is pick a world and we do our homework, we do our research, and we give you a little taste of what it's like. Salud. Salud. <laughs> Salud.